Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from OurNewTutors.com and welcome to this video on Entropies of Solution. So in this video we're going to look at uh, how we can construct what we call an entropy cycle and we're going to look at the terms in particular entropy of solution, entropy of hydrogen and the latter's entropy of dissociation and we're going to see how they can link together uh, and how we can calculate them as well. And we're also going to go through the theory of all of them uh, three terms that I've just mentioned um, just before. So we're just going to start with a bit of an uh, introduction to this um, and we're going to try and explain what we mean by entropy of solution, hydration and dissociation as well. So you can see we've got our uh, atoms here, our ions, our solid ionic compound and this is it displayed in this diagram here. You can see we've got positive and negative charges that are attracted to each other. So these are oppositely charged ions, and this is a very, very strong bond. It's an ionic compound. But when we dissolve this in water, uh, we actually get an enthalpy change. Um, and I'm going to explain why we get this enthalpy change uh, using this diagram here. So we've got our solid ionic compound. Now, when we add it to water, the ions, well, we should know that the ions break up. Uh, and the water, obviously, is involved in breaking up these ions. But if we break it up into two stages to try and explain the entropy change, then this can help us to explain how we can calculate it as well. So here's our ions. Uh, you can see if we break our ions up into individual ions, we call this a lattice entropy of dissociation uh, because the ions have been broken up. And these ions uh, are uh, in the gaseous phase. So you need to know your definitions for these as well. So if you're not showing your definitions, there is a video that looks into uh, entropy change definitions. So if you just click on the link below and you can have a look at that one there. But I'm going to assume that you know your definitions in this video. So you can see this is bond breaking. Now, when bond breaking, this is endothermic. So it has a positive value because energy is required to break the strong electrostatic attractions between oppositely charged ions. <laughs> and so this is what happens here. Okay, so if we carry on though, obviously we've got water involved then water effectively forms an attraction between the ions. Now we know that water is polar, uh, it has a delta negative oxygen and a delta positive hydrogen. Uh, and the delta positive hydrogens will be attracted to the negative ions from the uh, compound here, and the delta negative oxygens will be attracted to the positive ions. Uh, and this attraction between the water molecules and the ions is actually exothermic. This is effectively the same as bond forming. So this is an exothermic process. So this is called enthalpy of hydration. This is where we're taking ions in the gaseous state and we are uh, attracting or we're trying to uh, bond, well, attract water molecules to the ions uh, and this forms aqueous ions. Now, this is like a two-step process. Obviously, in reality, and uh, what actually happens is this happens in a full, in one full swoop. So you can see here we've got our solid ionic compound and we're forming a solution. So we call this an enthalpy of solution, going from the solid ions to ionic compounds to the hydrated ionic form down here. So this whole process, the whole thing, is called uh, enthalpy of solution. And this takes into account an endothermic process and an exothermic process. Okay, so like I say, we've got these terms here, and we're gonna learn how we can calculate these as well. So enthalpy of solution, enthalpy of hydration, and lattice enthalpy of dissociation. We can calculate them using something called an enthalpy cycle. This is very similar uh, in principle to a Hesse cycle, except uh, we don't have the basic uh, parts like in a Hesse cycle. So what we've done is I've written out the equation, and this is the equation, for example, I've used potassium chloride. This is our solid salt that's over here. And when you're writing out this equation, you should always write your solid compound here. And then the aqueous ions here, because this is the full step. So we're going from this to this. So this is the whole process here. And this is ultimately what you want to try and work out. So this is called the enthalpy of solution. We've got um, an indirect pathway, which is this here. So we either go directly to the ions in the aqueous state, or we can go to break the ions first. So this is this stage here. This is the lattice entropy of dissociation. This is this one. And I'll label this on here. So this is step three, this one here. So this is the lattice entry of dissociation, and then we can uh, hydrate our gaseous ions, you can see here, they're on the gaseous phase, to form aqueous ions, and this is step two. So this is like an indirect way, but we're still getting to the same part. Now what I've done is I've put the uh, uh, entry values in here, and you can, you'll get these in the exam if they expect you to calculate it. I've just got these from the data book, but this is the enthalpy, um, 
This one here is the lattice entropy of dissociation. This is endothermic because obviously energy is required to put it in. If you remember over here, this is plus 701. And these two here, for potassium and chloride, this is the enthalpy of hydration. So we're hydrating the ions. And this is K plus is minus 322 and minus 364. Remember, this is exothermic because we're bond forming. So we can use it, it treats it exactly the same way as a Hess's cycle. I'm going to write this in green so it makes it a bit easier. So we start from here. We want to work out this value here, which is the enthalpy of solution. So we go through here. So this is plus 701. Uh, and then we go up here. Because we go with the owl, the, uh, the sign stays the same. So that's minus 322, minus 364, because it's the two ions. Uh, and then that should give us a total value of plus 15 kilojoules per mole. So you can see that this overall process is endothermic. So we need to put energy in to effectively turn the solid potassium chloride into aqueous ions. So the overall process, endothermic and exothermic, the overall process, which is the third one, which I'll add on here. So this one here, going straight to there, is effectively the enthalpy of solution. And so this is step one. There you go. Okay, and just the final thing. Uh, just looking at ion size, and ion size has an impact or has an effect on the uh, enthalpies of um, uh, enthalpies of hydration that we've just calculated here. So we can have the ion size itself. For example, we might have a one plus ion and a two plus ion. Now, something with a two plus charge has a bigger um, charge density, so therefore the water molecules are going to be more strongly attracted to the two plus charge than the one plus charge. And that means that the enthalpy of hydration is going to be a lot larger for 2 plus ions than it is for 1 plus ions. Also, if we have the same charged ion, for example, we might have sodium and potassium. Uh, sodium is a smaller ion than potassium. Both of them are singly positively charged. But because sodium is a smaller ion, then the uh, ionic radius is smaller. The charge density is greater because it's a smaller ion. And that has the same effect. Uh, where it has a bigger hydration entropy. So just watch out for that as well in the exam. And just take into account charge size, the actual value of the charge, and the ion size as well, the size of the ion. But um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.